respected uh, His Excellency, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so this is uh, Dr. Borada Prashad Panigrahe. I am from India. So I'll be talking about, uh, which is a very important concern for any country today, the employment generation. So I'll be talking on that. Uh, of course, this is an AI-based seminar. So I'll be talking about the technology adaptation by SMEs so that they can upgrade to startups. Thank you. Thank you. So this side, right and left. Both. Thank you. So uh, I would like to again throw some light on the basic difference between a startup and SME. Uh, small medium enterprise, basically, if we see the employment generation by any micro, small, medium en enterprise, it is number is very less, except a few. But in case of startups, the number is very high. So like in case of India, there are some startups who have created a gen uh, employment more than 20,000, one one startup, more than 20,000 employment they have generated in a period of five to six years of time, okay? So that's the prime difference between a SME and a startup. So I would like to share about uh, my experience uh, on uh, kind of guiding these different enterprises. And so I'm privileged to mentor almost 300 plus startups in uh, 10 different sectors. Uh, in health tech, edu tech, clean tech, uh, we have agri tech, good number of startups show different sectors. And also, if I had the privilege to train more than 300 faculty members from different uh, engineering and management institutes. And also, I've trained around uh, 10,000 plus students uh, of different, again, these professional institutes like engineering and management colleges on this sort of So it's my passion, it's my DNA to uh, to encourage and whatever possible ways to support the boarding entrepreneurs. So, coming to this, uh, any kind of the key success factors for any uh, any startup, I mean any uh, entrepreneur. So, one is the the right fit, uh, the problem what you have identified. Is it a right problem? Okay, so. Any startups comes with a solution that uh, needs to be a uh, kind of, uh, that needs to solve a particular problem faced uh, in the society by the people in our social society. If you have identified that problem rightly, then you are, you are in the success track. If you have not identified that rightly, then there may be some obstacles. So for that, what do you need to do? Uh, I'm talking about from the budding entrepreneur's point of view or from the aspiring entrepreneur's point of view, uh, you need to do some primary research. So what kind of research? You need to interact with multiple stakeholders of the ecosystem, like your prospective customers. I mean, today he may not be buying from, uh, from you, but tomorrow who would be buying from you, you need to interact with them. I'm coming up with a product like this. Do you think it will be suitable? It is required. And this could be my pricing. Do you think this is this will be affordable in the uh, I mean by these prospective customers? So you need to ask this, these multiple questions to different stakeholders before you finalize your business idea. Uh, then how crowded is the market? Is it I mean this product is very generic? There are so many players in the market who are coming up this kind of product, or uh, it will be a kind of niche product that is a requirement. Uh, the my competitors they have similar kind of product, but uh, I have some different features. Which uh, I mean, technologically it is more sound. Pricing uh, from price point of view, it is less price as compared to my competitors product. So that also you need to analyze. And problem solution fit. That's what I told. That the key success mantra for any enterprise. The solution you have come up is it uh, has a correlation with the problem faced by the society. Second, the co-founder, which is very, very crucial. Again, uh, the difference between SME, uh, usually it is founded and drawn by one entrepreneur, one founder. But in case of startups, basically there are at least two to three co-founders are there. 
what is the necessity of uh, having multiple stakeholders of one company? There are co-founders basically with complementary skill set. Suppose I am good at uh, business development skill, so my co-founder might be good at people management skill, or my other co-founder might be good at uh, process management technology. So it needs a group of uh, uh, co-founders to start a venture, then probability of success is high. Technology, of course, I mean, uh, nowadays without technology, uh, scalability of any business, it's next to possible, okay. So what happens in this case, you must have some technological integration. I'll be talking in detail about some of the key technologies, what are applied by different startups. I'll give some of the uh, real life examples also. Uh, so uh, it has to be this technology integration. Don't think that at the day one from the beginning, 100% technology integration will bring in. No, it's not possible. Uh, you, uh, I mean, you may not afford that, being a kind of entrepreneur at the early stage. So what do you need to do? You need to uh, have a kind of roadmap of your, I mean, the, uh, the technology in integration. So start with low investment technology integration, then you scale it up, okay? And of course, API integration is there and uh, you, uh, you have enough opportunity to scale it up. Uh, then the marketing. Uh, it is very crucial, again, from uh, SMEs, basically the today's, uh, cons uh, today's uh, trend, basically they go for print media or electronic media. But for a startup, it is not affordable. So what happens in this case, digital marketing is the best source. For that, you should have very strong content. Your content should be very engaging with the audience, with the, cost with the prospective customers, so that, I mean, with low investment, you will improve your brand visibility, your kind of marketing, uh, uh, my, the branding and marketing of your product. So customer feedback, of course, at a regular interval, you get some videos from your customers, get some blogs from your customers, feedback, and it needs to be incorporated on all your social media pages on your website. Social media pages needs to be updated on a regular basis. Every day, some new content you have to post, and the content should not be static. The content should be dynamic. What I mean to say dynamic, it must be engaged with your customers. Uh, team, again, uh, co-founders, they are the owners, they are the stakeholders of this uh, startup. But team, basically, the people who will be working with you, who will be taking your journey ahead. So in this case, you need to hire the right talent. Again, based upon my experience, always select the employees with right attitude. Anybody can be trained on any skill, but if that person doesn't have positive attitude, uh, kind of welcoming attitude to, to learn, uh, to kind of uh, uh, adopt with people, then it will be difficult. So always uh, focus to right, uh, se uh, to select the right kind of people. And usually in startups, in Indian context, many startups, they may not afford a high salary to their employees at the early days, but they retain good talents because they give this employee stock ownership plan. So based upon the profit of this uh, startup, they usually also, the employees also are a part of this profit. Uh, so that's also one trend in most of the startups in India. A low hierarchy, there is no kind of so many reporting uh, hierarchies, maybe very flat structure. Directly all employees will report to their manager. And manager will, all the managers, they will report to the founder or co-founders. Co um, then of course, flexi work option, like COVID time we have already uh, kind of, we have already experienced employee benefit. As much as employee benefits you can give to the startup because you are not able to compensate them properly in monetary aspect. So let's give them some flexibility and some other benefits. Yeah, so again, a key difference between SME and startup. Most of the SMEs, I'm not telling 100% SME, most of the SMEs, they don't have any kind of innovation. But in case of a startup, you have to inhale and excel, like oxygen, carbon dioxide. You have to inhale, excel innovation on a regular basis. So what kind of innovation? What are those processes? One uh, should be, it should be in your business model. Like uh, what could be the different revenue sources for your startup 
it's you may need to innovate it on a regular basis i would like to give an example of uh, uber i hope you might be knowing that taxi company uber so in, when they started their business in india they had only one source of revenue that was from the commission basically they get 20% commission from this taxi owners but subsequently they generated revenue from advertisement they generated revenue from food delivery they generated revenue from insurance every ride is insured and millions of rides are happening on a regular basis so also they generate revenue through this so being a startup also you need to also innovate what could be the, the different uh, revenue sources for me suppose today i'm starting with one revenue stream maybe one year down the line i should have at least two to three different revenue streams uh the market centric business model of course always your business model should be towards customer uh, centric process the supply chain uh sales and marketing customer relationship management and finance whatever your different processes business processes you need to bring some kind of innovation to that i would like to give one example there is a startup in uh, tamil nadu one state in the south southern part of india so there is a startup who is basically supplying the frozen uh, fruits and vegetables to different parts of india different retail outlets so what is doing uh, in his vehicle basically suppose the temperature is set at uh, 10 degrees centigrade so it continues i mean from the beginning till the end till that re retail outlet that temperature 10 degrees centigrade continues but what happens is a hill state so some of the places temperature automatically the temperature is around 4 to 5 so what happens uh in in this case you need not to run your uh, kind of refrigerator at that point of time so you save fuel cost okay so with this kind of in innovation like for example now he has put artificial intelligence into this system and uh, automatically the refrigeration process stops so in the temperature the environmental temperature is less than 10 degrees centigrade and there is a lots of cost saving in that aspect technology so te technology as i have already said low cost to high cost technologies that must be scope for integration it's not like that like for example in case of a school there are startups in india who are into edutech sector like for example they started with only the student attendance they provide the software to the schools which will track the attendance of the students so you need not to have a physical attendance system then what happened they integrated the school fee uh, taking the school fee from that they also integrated the parents feedback they also integrated this kind of complete evaluation process the grades everything uh, all i mean daily basis uh, the parents get updatedation on the marks okay so what i mean to say you should have a road map for your technology integration in a phased manner so that it should not uh, kind of you should not be blocked in between your software or your technology must have that facility okay yeah and this is very interesting i would like to share some of the kind of our incubated startup i mean basically mentored by me this startup the first one is the it's a drone tech startup so the what this uh, startup is about this drone the speciality of this drone this drone can carry 50 kg of product at 10000 feet height is like a aircraft so in india it's supplying to many army uh, air forces basically where in the difficult terrain uh, where the hill state uh, the suppose for the road transportation it takes almost 8 to 10 hours in this case he delivers those product within 10 to 15 minutes okay so this is the drone and also they have they have uh, they have come up with the medical ambulance the drone as it carries 50 now they have upgraded to 75 kg so a kind of a patient because they need as very heavy traffic so for 1 km it may take uh, 20 25 minutes so in this case it is also acting like a ar ambulance okay this is one start second this is planetary it is a maybe i can say uh may not be our asia pacific fast starter which has replaced lead in battery lead is replaced with some plant material okay so what is happening the plant material that generating energy and also the energy is stored inside the battery instead of lead they it is stored in that 
plant material, the waste plant material. Okay. Now they have come up up to 12 volt and we are supporting, we are mentoring them to upgrade that at least a kind of a room, uh, a house can be kind of can be managed with this battery. Maybe at least uh, two ACs, uh, three or four fans, uh, seven, eight light bulbs can be managed with this battery. So he's working on that. Another interesting startup, this is a food tech startup. Uh, it's uh, the sugar cane. Initially, what he was doing, he was supplying sugar cane, processed sugar cane, to different outlets. Okay, uh, he was not able to scale up. I mean, he, from two to three outlet, it was very difficult for him because it was cost capital intensive. So what he did, he introduced this artificial intelligence and Internet of Things. Okay, so it is like a bending machine. Uh, it gives different flavors of sugarcane juice, okay, lemon, pineapple, orange, multiple flavors he has added. It also gives it kind of what quantity, okay, and to different price. With a scan, with a scan, you can pay that for that sugarcane juice. So now he has more than uh, more than ten different out outlets with very minimal investment because he need not to invest in people. I mean, it is completely automated mode, and on his uh, dashboard, he gets the information at a regular in interval. Okay, okay, this outlet, the raw material is going to be kind of finished, so I need to supply by this time. So accordingly, he manages his supply chain, so there he's saving the cost. So what I mean to say, technology has a great role in any business, in any whether it's a SME or it's a startup, any business technology play the major role. Um, I would like to give some of the, yes, this is the mid one. This is an interesting startup. This like elderly people, they take medicine at frequent intervals, multiple medicines at frequent intervals. Sometimes they don't remember, they skip this. So what this, this is a IoT, Internet of Things based device. So you just put uh, your medicines, give the time command, like X medicine will be, I need X medicine at 8 a.m. or Y medicine at uh, uh, 9 p.m. So automatically the device opens only that medicine and it gives you a kind of indication and the indication also goes to your kids. If your kids may be in US or maybe some other country, the indication goes to him that your father or mother has taken the medicine today or not. If it is not taken, then again the reminder goes to the kid. Getting my point? So again, it is application of Internet of Things technology here. Okay. Some interesting startup, that side, the right side, okra chips. It is a vacuum fried chips. Everybody now, it is very concerned about their, uh, the health. Yes. So it's a vacuum fried chips, uh, very low fat. Usually, uh, the fat content is around 60%, but in this case, the fat content is less than 5%. Okay. Um, the last one, basically, it's a the toothbrush, which is uh, from the waste metal from the uh, the uh, paddy and uh, wheat uh, waste material. So again, it's biodegradable. So these are some of the very interesting startup. And what I mean to say, all the startup they have some technological integration, whether it's a food-based startup or a kind of health-based startup. Why startups fail? Very very. Uh, Crucial component, again, based on my research, based upon my experience, I've come up with these uh, points. Product market misfit. As I told, there is a requirement. The requirement in the society is something different. You have come up with a different product. Second, you are targeting a wrong segment, wrong market segment. The market segment, that is not the right market segment for you. You might be. So that's also a major drawback. Lack of prototype development, MVP or validation. Most of the cases, the student entrepreneurs or the boarding entrepreneur, what they do, they just think about some idea and they love it, okay? So they get so much passionate, they forget about all the research, all this kind of foundation work. And then they get into this kind of, then when they, instead of developing a prototype, validating that, they directly come into a product and at the end of the day, product is not accepted in the market. They have spent good amount of money, they have spent good amount of time, but the end, at the end of the day, the product is not accepted in the market. That's also another major problem. 
idea to invest, it never happens. There are huge investment required for that idea to be kind of from concept to a product. It never happens. You also need to be very much realistic that whether it is affordable, whether this idea can be converted to invest, I mean, you can make money. Poor uh, wavelength be match between the founding members, conflict between the founding members, inappropriate pricing structure, capital crunch, poor innovation, lack of technology. This is also another company. I think time alert has given, I'll just, okay. So what are the investors they look for? Investor, the first and foremost requirement is the traction. You must have some revenue generation through your startup. Uh, innovation is the, is the, again, foremost of this year, next to traction. Technology, uh, market potential, how big is the market? Okay, can this product be scaled up in other multiple countries or only in a particular place? Business scalability. So these are the major factors, basically, the investors they look for. Omar, Advantage, of course, it's a very startup friendly environment, political, economic, uh, social stability, uh, which is a kind of great uh, positive factor for any startup. Strategic location, it is the intersection of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, all these places. So, I mean, all the, I mean, young mass, the youth must be kind of encouraged to start your uh, ventures. So, recommendation, some of the insight for this, for the entrepreneur. You must go through the entrepreneurship curriculum. Don't think that uh, entrepreneurship, I mean, I love uh, uh, business so I can start this. No, there are certain, it's a science. Okay, unless and until you understand the basics of civil engineering, can you construct a building or can you construct a bridge? Similarly, unless and until you understand the basic concepts of entrepreneurship, you cannot be a successful entrepreneur, okay? Because idea validation, multiple aspects are there you need to do that. Corporate par partnership, university linkages be incubated at any of the universities. There are some incubation centers, government incubation center, you must get that mentoring support from there. So I'm not covering this. Uh, again, the purpose, any business at the end of the day, there should be some purpose, there should be some impact, there should be some positive aspect for the society. You must focus that in addition to pro profit. Don't only focus the profit. Understand your market, uh, research thoroughly, believe in data, no use of sixth sense. Don't think that I love this idea, whole world will accept my idea. No, it never happens. Uh, build a resilient and adaptable mindset. So if your idea is not kind of working out, change your idea. I mean, maybe you can pivot so somewhere. Focus on value, not just profits. Uh, strong financial discipline. Whenever you are getting investment, be, be, be very particular, how judiciously and how in a rational, in a very professional way you will be managing that uh, investment, not lavishly spending that investment and less focus on the startup. Yeah, thank you so much for your patience hearing. Any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.